So you just found out you had prostate cancer or someone you know, and you found the website, the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute website, and we're here with Dr. David Fryfield, a radiation oncologist, to talk about some of the different options that they offer here at the Willamette Valley Cancer Institute. And welcome and thanks. And, well, thank uh, you. I'm excited about this because uh, I had prostate cancer in 2010 and uh, had a treatment that you now are offering here. But let's talk, let's start at the beginning. How, this really is a focused radiation that they use these days, and, and that's the machine that you have, this. It is, the Trilogy. Uh, it's a, uh, it allows us to be very precise where, where we deliver the radiation and where we don't deliver the radiation. And that is the name of the game in the world of radiation oncology. You want to treat the cancer and avoid all of the surrounding healthy tissue as much as possible. That's where back in the day, radiation was, in the old days, it was blasting and got some other things in the way. And so people sometimes have a fear of this, but it's so much different now. Well, many people come in and they've heard stories or you know, they have a relative who had a lot of problems. And I came here in 1984 to this community and uh, we had the, the best technology available at that time, but compared to today, it was very crude, and sometimes I don't even like to think about those days, but we did the best that we could and uh, tried to avoid side effects as much as possible, but still, we were having to go through a lot of healthy tissue to get the radiation in there. And now you don't have to do that as much. You can really target this, can't you? Can you explain how that works, what, what your job is with that radiation? Targeting is, is what it's all about, uh, finding the area that needs to be treated, and identifying that for the computer. And we do that with something called CT simulation. So a little CAT scan is done and then I tell the computer, uh, I sit down with my computer and I tell the computer exactly what we want to treat and where the healthy tissue is that we don't want to treat. I have a whole team of people who help me plan that radiation. So each radiation treatment plan is customized for each individual patient. We don't have uh, two or three plans that we take off the shelf. Each uh, patient gets their own. But when we deliver the radiation, we use something called a smart arc, IMRT. And that comes on the Trilogy machine. And that allows us to deliver a distribution of the radiation that is very precisely placed around the cancer. So you can go in and really target the cancer and try to avoid it, because you know where, you can see it, you know where it is, and so you can try to avoid everything else, especially some of those vital things that we want to hold on to. Yeah, especially if with a, a cancer like prostate cancer. Some other cancers are a little more difficult than that, but the prostate tends to be pretty easily seen and, uh, and localized, and that's what we do. We identify it, and we go after it. So talk to us about your, your new uh, technique with Calypso. It's a treatment that I used when I had prostate cancer, but you guys now have brought this to the community. And it, it's another tool, but it's a good tool. So talk, why don't we, how does oh, that work? Oh, it is work? a good tool. We are, we are very excited to have that available now. That comes under the category of image guidance. And uh, Calypso has little transponders, uh, little radio beacons, and uh, there's a, uh, a detector and it can localize where in the body the prostate is because it turns out that the prostate moves around a little bit. And so if you're going to have very precise delivery of the radiation treatment, you need to know every day where that prostate is located. Now it doesn't move a lot, but we're talking millimeters. So we need to know exactly where it is. And Calypso allows us to do that. And a millimeter when it comes to treating your prostate is a very important millimeter, <laughs> isn't it? Is. Yes, it is. Because the thing with radiation, you don't want to damage bladder, um, rectum, right. and, and those nerves around the prostate that give, give us the ability to have an erection. Oh, that's correct. Uh, the, the good news is that the side effects are much, much less than they were uh, 10, 15 years ago uh, because we have these techniques that are available today. And they're getting better still. Uh, but we're able to, to more precisely deliver the radiation and avoid those other organs. Tell me about the other, the other system you have in addition to Calypso that really helps target that for folks. Well, we also have a, a CT scan mounted on the head of our treatment machine. And so there are times when we will do a mini CT scan to view exactly where the prostate is located and uh, in relation to the rectum and the bladder and uh, use that for targeting also. So we have a couple of different tools that we'll use when they're appropriate. The other thing that makes me really comfortable with you guys is that you have, um, you have physicists, you have a whole team of people here, um, not just a few that are actually doing this procedure, and these are experts right here in our community that know, and, and I'll tell you, from going through the treatment, you want an expert in the booth who's doing your work for you, and, and having a team is much more uh, appeasing for me, it makes me feel better. That's one of the things that I tell patients, and you know, they come in to, to talk with me and interview me, but uh, the team is vitally important in planning their radiation treatment and then also delivering that. Uh, we have three physicists here who 
uh, check each treatment plan and run it through a series of safety checks and then they're monitoring the treatment as they go along to make sure everything's going exactly as it's supposed to go. We have dosimetrists who help us plan the radiation treatment for each individual patient and then therapists who, are, uh, who specialize in radiation therapy delivery who help uh, target all uh, the, the cancer each day. When people come in you know, for a treatment with a, any of these radiation treatments, there's really nothing felt in that treatment. No. I think some people think, you know, if I get to feel anything when I have radiation treatment, there's really nothing felt at all. Oh, they're often surprised at that. They wonder if we've turned on the machine because nothing really happens. Is there any um, side effects from the treatment while going through the treatment? I, I know that varies on different people, but anything that they can expect? Well, radiation is typically given on a daily basis, Monday through Friday, over a number of weeks. And uh, with each individual treatment, there is no sensation at all. I tell people, if you can drive here, you can drive home. You will feel exactly the same after as you felt before. But there are some side, effect, uh, side effects that build up over the course of a couple of weeks. And it really depends on where the radiation is going. So every part of the body is going to have different uh, side effects. So what do you hope men out there and their families watching this, um, your best advice you keep telling me is don't panic. Don't take a deep breath. Get some information, talk to specialists in a variety of different specialties, surgery, radiation. Uh, get the information that you need to feel comfortable with the treatment that you've chosen. I think sometimes our temptation is to, as um, I don't know if this is men and women, but as a guy, it's like, well, you know, I, I got the, I got the, uh, the, the diagnosis, now I just got to do whatever I was told to do, and here's the, here's the diagnosis, so I'm going to go get it done and do it, rather than stopping and really doing some research and, and talking to other people, not just, you know, the, the, the one or your, you know, go to your primary care physician, but also get some expert advice from other folks like you people. I think it's important to talk to the primary care physician. They're going to have a totally different perspective, and they, you know, they know you pretty well, and they know your other medical history. Uh, sometimes specialists, uh, and myself included, sometimes we can't see the forest for the trees. And that's just, that's the way we are. We know a lot about one tree, but not necessarily a lot about the forest. The primary care doctor, they know a lot about you, and they can be an advisor. And I think that is an important resource that every fellow should, should use when they're facing uh, this decision. And then when you have a team of people all here, do you, you, you also have a better way of focusing people to different kinds of treatments. So they get a better idea of what's really out there. Because the internet can really steer you in, in, a, in a scary direction. I mean, that was one of the most frightening things for me was on the internet, it, there was a lot of doom and gloom on there. And uh, you really got to go talk to a doctor and, and, and an expert to, to kind of relieve you and say, okay, this isn't the end of the world, but my life did change. Well, it's also important to realize that there, prostate cancer is not just one particular disease. Uh, it, it, it's a category, it really is a lot of diseases depending upon the stage. Sometimes there's advanced prostate cancer, sometimes Prostate cancer has spread even, but uh, not very often if we catch it early, uh, thank goodness. So I think it's important for a fellow to sit down uh, and find out what his stage is, uh, what his Gleason score is, what his risk category is, how aggressive is his cancer. And that uh, will then lead to treatments that might be appropriate and ones that might not be appropriate for him. Uh, it doesn't really matter what his brother-in-law chose or one of his golfing buddies or what somebody on the internet happened to choose. Uh, it's, it's not about them, it's about you. And so you need to find out about your particular disease and what are the options that are available for you and then start working through those to find the one that's going to be right for you. And you can't go back. Cancer is now a reality in your life, and, but you can go forward. You can go forward, yes. All right. And you can do that in a very wise fashion. Uh, and, and just taking time to, to learn and to uh, educate yourself about what's going to be your best treatment. And ultimately, if you do that, your outcome will be better. Everything is better. Your healing's better. That's the best way to approach it. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, thank you. If you have any other questions, go to our website. We have all kinds of information, other interviews, and uh, get educated before you make a decision.